Well, we have a great Taurus portion this week. I want you to open your Bibles to the book of Deuteronomy. We're going to look at chapter 3 and then into 4, verse 28, if I'm correct. Are they pulling that up? That's verse 1. We need 20, I think it's 27 or 28. You can go to 28. So here Moses is getting ready to realize that his life is about over. He has done his part. He was a great leader. But even great leaders make mistakes, don't they? You know, the old saying, the buck stops here, right? With that leader, it's where the, everything happens. And he has to take responsibility for what he did. And, but God is still letting him look into the promised land to see all that was given. And here it says, But commission Joshua and encourage and strengthen him, for he will cross over before this people, and will be, uh, and he will enable them to what? Inherit the land you, that you uh, will see. So this is a very important promise. See, a good leader knows how to build up future leaders. A good leader is not afraid to develop other leaders. Matter of fact, a good leader wants the next leader to be even better than they were. And that's truly what makes a leader a leader. Is that person who can say, I have brought you to this point, but now this is the person to take you to the next level. Not everyone can do that with grace. But what we see here is how God has chosen Moses for that reason. And he reminds him to what? Strengthen and encourage How many of you have been in a job situation and the boss takes all your credit? Come on, right? You do the stuff and the boss is the one taking the credit. And you can't say anything because they're the boss, right? And you know in your heart you're doing the right thing. I remember I had a situation that was like that. And I was getting frustrated. And Judy reminded me that there's the most important person who knows the truth. Who knows who was really doing what. Of course, I was angry. I said, who? And she said, God. See, because that's all who matters, really. Right? It doesn't matter if the boss is taking all the credit. Because here's reality. When you leave... And you should leave on the right on the right terms, right? Even if they fire you, because let's face it, stupid bosses do that, right? If you go out with a smile, the truth always gets revealed, doesn't it? Let's be honest. The truth always gets revealed. And that's what we have to remember. Sometimes it's, it's not on our time. Sometimes we don't even see it, right? But if you do what you're supposed to do in the manner that God has instructed, then guess what? Nothing's going to go against you. And that's what Moses is trying to teach us here. Yeah, I was just reading an article, caught my attention, that Chick-fil-A is leaving our country. You didn't hear this? They're going to Canada. They're opening the first international location. (laughs) Y'all just thought the world was coming to an end. uh, If I had set up at McDonald's, you wouldn't have cared, right? Think about that for a second. McDonald's, we all grew up on the golden arches, right? Especially those kids from the 60s and 70s. Some in the 60s, they grew up on some other stuff too, but... (laughs) right we grew up with McDonald's it was our place right 
We all remember the Happy Meal and the Riddler and those little cookies that, you know, that didn't taste that good, but they looked like them, so it was okay, right? Come on now. Right? But yet, here's this small Christian-based company. It started right here in Atlanta, Georgia. And guess what? They're now bigger than McDonald's. They're rated the top fast food restaurant in the country. Right? And it's because of the leadership. Do you know that the, uh, they're being protested by the LTBGF, whatever that all the letters are? Um, they're being protested because they're coming into a progressive country and city. They're going to Toronto. And they're, if you don't know what a progressive is, look it up on Wikipedia, right? Right? Very liberal. And they're protesting them coming. Why? Because of their Christian values. So why are they protesting churches and synagogues? That's what it's all based on, right? But if your company runs that way, they're going to protest against you. Right? And it's so interesting because when, when you read about what Moses was doing, passing it down to that next generation, when we leave our position... We need to be able to pass it to a generation that's going to take it to the next level. Because you know what? There are better ministers than me. And you know what? I want this, you know, pe- people, when, when I, if you know me, and if you've been around here long enough, you know if, if we see people that we're trying to leadership, we're going to, put, we're going to give them the ability to do it. Sometimes it works well, other times it doesn't. Because being in ministry is tough. When you start getting into tell the first thing I tell people we're getting into ministry, and you can ask anyone around, you, you want to get into ministry, you, be, you better get ready to have the devil attack you like never before. Because as soon as you say that, he's coming after you, right? But we need to be ready, because we have the truth that we can stand on. The biblical values that God has given us, and for leadership, to move forward. That's the key. And that's what we see here in Moses. See, Moses, just like other great leaders, was distinguished by really their, their train of thought. There are a lot of good, successful people who can run businesses, but their usually thoughts are on the what. What do we need to do next? A true leader focuses on the why. Why are we doing what we're doing? And they stand behind that. And they don't go against their own, that, that, those values that they base on. That's what makes a true company and a true leader. You don't need a change to hit the latest fad. You need to keep to your values, and those will bring you to that next level. And that's really what we see here. So Moses is now encouraging him and, right, and the people. Verse 29. Verse 29. There we go. I'm encouraging them in the back. <laughs> so he stayed in the valley opposite Beth Par. Keep going. Now, O Israel, listen to the statutes and ordinance that I am teaching you to do, so that you may live and go and, and, and possess the land that Adonai your God. Uh, God of your fathers is giving you. So here he's, he, Moses is talking to them now. And he's giving them a reminder. He's telling them, first of all, to obey God's commandments. As you go on in the rest of this chapter, and rest of this week's tour portion, he basically repeats the Ten Commandments again, right? And we need that reminder. Sometimes we forget, don't we? That's why it's so important to read the Scripture. Each week, read the weekly tour portion. It might take 30 or 40 minutes to do the whole thing. Am I right? Is that so hard? How many of you waste 30 or 40 minutes a week? Come on. 
you can change it right there, right? So read the word so you understand it and so you, it, it can minister to you. Every time I read God's word, he opens up stuff to me. And it's not just me. He does it to you too. Let's face it. That's why some of y'all don't want to read it. Right? Lord, I might have to change. Yeah, you might have to. That's life. But it's going to be for the better, isn't it? Because God wants us to possess the land and the promises he's asked for us. You know, I'm not a name and claim it person, but God doesn't want you to be suffering, does he? And guess what? If you do God's work, you're going to have some suffering, aren't you? Let's face it. It's not going to be peachy king. Maybe it's going to be a little tougher because the devil doesn't like it when you do God's stuff. And he's going to try to intervene. But guess what? God wins in the long run, doesn't he? And we can receive the blessings that God has for us if we're willing to take it. And we're willing to do what he has called us to do. And that's what he's calling for us now. So it goes on to say, You must not add to the word that I am commanding you or take away from it in order to keep the mitzvot of Adonai, your God, that I am commanding you. What's he basically saying here? Man, don't add to it. Don't go, I, don't need, I don't need your interpretation of the Bible. I had an aunt. She passed away a number of years ago. Her name was Aunt Mimi. And I remember going to her house. I was getting ready to go on a mission trip. And I had to go down to Florida. And so I, I asked if I could stay with them for a night. And uh, it was great. Because we went down. It was in, uh, I think it was in, where was it? Um... West Palm Beach. So I get there and I'm, you know, all set. And at 4.45, they're ready to go to dinner. I'm like, it's 4.45. Oh, we got to get for the early bird special, right? So we had to go eat early. And I remember, you know, we get back there and, of course, they decide, even though they haven't been to synagogue in years, they're not religious Jews, they're Reformed Jews that they now know more than me about the Bible. At that time, I'd already gone back to Bible school, had gotten a degree in biblical education, graduated summa cum laude. I'm not bragging, I'm just, but they knew more. And I remember her, we were talking, and somehow we got on the matzah thing, the three matzahs. And she was determined that the Kohens were their own tribe. They were the tr Kohen tribe. You know, it's Gad, Kohen, right? I said, no. I pulled, she had one of those big, remember those big, thick Bibles, that the coffee table Bibles, that everyone had, it's the Holy Bible, and it was really, they had a Jewish version of it, right? And, it was, and I said, let me show you, and, I, and I, as I dusted the layers of dust off of it, right? I, I go to that scripture and I show her and I, I read where it talks about the 12 tribes. And I name off all the 12 tribes. I said, Kohanes are not one of the tribes. They're a, a subcategory of the Levites. Finally, she goes, okay. And I thought this was done. And then her friends had to come. They were going to come join us for the 445. Oh, you can, yeah, you got to go for the blue light special. They walk through the door. She, without saying hello to her friend, she looks at her friend. She said, will you please tell him that the Kohens are a tribe? <laughs> See, she had her own Bible. And in her Bible, the Kohens were a tribe. And it didn't matter what the Word of God said. See, too many times we have our own Bible we've written. You know, and pastors have done this. We know about, you know, there's big time pastors now, right? They have mega groups. But it's okay for, uh, you know, gay marriage couples and all, you know, get married and all these things. Like Even though the scripture clearly says what? No. Right? And yet, they've changed it because they want to reach everybody. Well, I want to reach everybody too. We, we welcome 
gay and lesbians into the congregation. It's not a problem. We've had them before. We have them now. Guess what? We don't approve of what they're doing, right? We hate the sin. We love the sinner. But guess what we've also seen? Them get healed from that. So see, we can, God can, can minister to us when we read His Word. And when we stay true to it. And that's what's so important. We can't make up our own Bible. And that's what He's saying. Is we need to follow God's commandment. Why? So that He can give us all that He wants us to have. That's so important to understand. Next verse. Your eyes have seen what Adonai did to Baal Per. For Adonai your God destroyed from among everyone who followed them. Keep going. But you who held tight to Adonai your God are alive today, all of you. Stick to God's word. When we stay true, guess what? We persevere through. Sure, there are going to be trials and tribulations. People might protest you. They're doing it to Chick-fil-A. Do you remember about, I guess it was about two years ago, when the whole thing came out and because of the values of the owner of the company, they wanted to protest? And what happened? It backfired major. Why? But, but what, what, what happened? The body of believers took up and said, enough. Here's my question. Why aren't we still doing that today? Why is the body of believers sitting here and taking a second stance? Our, we're going through a cultural change. How many of y'all realize that? Right? Let's face it. We went through it in the, in the 60s. We had a cultural change. Right? Kind of spurred over to the 70s. The 80s and 90s kind of went back to somewhat, let's try to get back to normal. Right? We had a push back. Kind of went too, too far. And now it's trying to come back again. And it's this division that we're seeing taking place. And it's not among races. It's really among uh, almost wealthy and non-wealthy. It's, you know, those who are working and those who don't want to work. It's a big difference, isn't it? I'm not talking about a person who's unemployed and trying to look for a job and can't find one. I'm talking about the person who just doesn't want to do anything or get it all given to them, right? We, we grew up, we, we put a, uh, the millennials, we're going to be in for a ride. How many of y'all figured them out yet? If you're a millennial, please explain yourself to me when you have a chance, right? Very hard to, I mean, they have their own work, you know, you have to have a, uh, places for them to relax while they're working. Hello? Yeah, and you know, they have slides and they, and they have to have coffee breaks and, and it, it, they work on their schedule, right? How many of you were, if, were, are able to do that? Raise your hand. A millennial, okay, no, <laughs> right? Very rare, right? If you do, the boss tells you to get it done, you got to get it done. Right, but we need to change the mindset of the people. And we need to focus back in on what God has called us to do. Because when we keep his word, guess what? We get blessed. Chick-fil-A is a great example. They are, you know, you go to, they, they had to tear the Chick-fil-A down near my house. We're very upset. Just don't t- talk amongst yourself. And being, right? <laughs> because they're having to make a bigger one. They, they had, you go by and they, and at breakfast time at lunch, and you look at the fast food restaurants, there's only one that has a line around it. And it's not because they're slow service. Right? And it's based on the values of why. Why did he get in the business? He wanted to make a better chicken sandwich. And the man did it. Do you know he used to work for Ch- Kentucky Fried Chicken? And we all know that. He started with Kentucky Fried Chicken. So you got to learn these little things. I read things. <laughs> right? But what we see here is he, he stuck by his values. And it's the not to lose focus on God. Do you realize he's closed one day a week and he's doing more business than the other places? 
Does that tell us something? They can follow, you can follow God's word, and guess what? You're going to be blessed more than the other guys. Just do it. I, I, I know people here who have businesses, and they will tell you that they've done that. They, they obey God's word, and guess what? They get blessed more. It's as simple as that. You know, watch what happens. Yeah, they're persecuting, you know, Chick-fil-A gets protested. But I am so glad that the community finally stood up. I, so it takes a chicken sandwich to get the body of believers. That's the scary part, right? It's all about food. See, I told you, the whole thing goes about food. By the way, we have lunch afterwards. <laughs> but that's... <laughs> what did you say? It's not Chick-fil-A, though. <laughs> but that's what we have to understand, is to keep our values focused. I want to keep going. I'm not going to get through this one, I can tell you. All right, keep going. See, just as Adonai, my God, commanded me, I have taught you statutes and ordinances to do in the land that you are about to enter and, and to possess. Keep going. You must keep and do them, for it is your wisdom and understanding in the eye of, eyes of the peoples who will hear all these statutes and say, Surely this, this great nation is a wise and understanding people. Think about that. See, what we do and how we do things is how other people look at us. I remember when I was going through that situation, that the person was taking all the credit for all the stuff that I had done. And I'll tell you, it was in ministry too, so it hurt even more. All right? But it wasn't that I was doing it. The Lord told me to do it, and that's what I was just doing, right? But you know what? In the long run, people see through it, don't they? People see the truth. They can look from the outside, and one person can be taking the credit but they know who really did it. Right? And that's what my wife had. You don't have to. Your name doesn't have to be on anything. People are going to know the truth. And that's all that's important. You know what? If God gets the glory, that's the best thing. And I had to get humbled on that. It was a tough thing. You know, our pride. We have pride, don't we? But I realized, you know, all right, Lord. She's, you know, and don't you hate it when your wife's always right? We just got to listen to them, guys. <laughs> 29 years of just listen to them. <laughs> Trust me on this one, right? <laughs> you notice all the women are going, yeah, and the guys are going, okay, he's right, but I'm not going to say anything, okay. <laughs> but that's what we see take place. When we do the right thing, the world will see, and others will take notice. And they'll take respect. And that's what we see taking place. Keep going. For what great nation is there that has God so near to them as Adonai, our God, is wherever we can call, on, whenever we call on him. He's focusing on the why. Why are we different? Why are we different? Because we have God with us. Other nations have gods, don't they? Let's face it, they still have them today, right? But our God is with us. Our God changes things. Our God tells us to bless Israel and we get blessed. And guess what? We bless Israel, we get blessed. Period. We curse Israel, we get cursed. Period. These other nations, guess what? Even though they don't believe in our God, when they go against Israel, guess what happens? They get cursed. Period. I like that word right now. Because it's so important to understand that God's word is still true and alive today. It has not changed one bit. And you know what? It's going to be the same until he comes back. Not a jot or a tittle will change from his word. 
What he said to Moses is still valid today. And if it's a hundred years from now until he comes back, guess what? It will still be valid then. And that's what we have to base our life on. And that's how we have to lead and teach future generations to lead. Keep going. What great nation is there that has statutes and ordinance like they are right, that are righteous like all of this Torah that I am setting before you today? Only be watchful and watch over your soul closely so you do not forget the things your eyes have seen and slip from your heart all the days of your life. You are to make them known to your children and your children's children. God has given us an, a, an opportunity to lead future generations. You know, we take pride. It, it, you know, it's so important. The, gener the children we see here in the congregation, that's what makes the difference. Because you know what? They're growing up. And if we've taught them right, they're going to want to teach their next generation. You know, so many times kids go into those teen years and they become rebellion. I know none of us did. Right? But what I'm so proud to see here in our congregation is our kids are involved. Our kids want to come. They're not, are they perfect? No. Neither were we, right? But you know what? They want to serve and they understand. You know, we were on the trip to Israel. And some of y'all were, were there at the dining room table. And we had a gentleman on the trip. Great guy. His name's Dean. But he, he has some, he has his understanding in Scripture. And it's good. It's not bad. He's not wrong or anything. But, you know, sometimes we have, some people say tomatoes. Others say tomatoes, right? And I remember him talking. And he was, we were sharing a point, And we were going back and forth. A friendly conversation. And uh, Natalie jumped into the conversation. And started sharing with him. And I'm like, wow. This is neat. This is what it's all about. Right? She had the confidence enough to share the word with him. And to show how, she, how, how we look at a certain uh, passage or scripture. And it was so interesting to see that next generation. That's what it's about. Look around. We have, our kids are not in another place. They're here learning. And what are they learning? They're learning two things. They're learning the word, and they listen. Don't you be? They might be coloring. Man, kids can multitask. They're amazing. They can. But you know, they'll, they'll start telling you things, right? But not only are they learning from what we're saying, they're learning from you, you, the parents and the people around them. How are they? Are we expecting our kids to know how to worship God if they've never seen their dad, who is the macho guy, the tough guy? The big guy in that family. Praise the Lord. Maybe even have tears coming out. We got to be able to teach the next generation. And lead them. And that's what Moses was telling them. Don't focus on the what. Focus on the why. Why are we different than all the other nations? Because God is with us. It's that simple. Chick-fil-A. God is with them. And you might not like their philosophy, but you definitely like their sandwich, don't you? It's addictive. Come on now. I'm seeing people shaking their heads. They, they know it. Right? Don't you, can we own stock in the company? Are they, I, think, I don't think they're publicly owned, are they? They're not. You know, it's amazing what that philosophy, though. And it all has stayed the same. Stick to God's values. When you do it God's way, guess what? You're going to be blessed. And teach your kids so what? They can get blessed. Let's keep going. The day that you stood before Adonai, your God, in Hober, Adonai said to me, Gather the people to me, and I will make them hear my words, so that they learn to fear me all the days that they live on the earth, and so that they teach their children. Next verse. You came near and stood at the bottom of the mountain, while the mountain was blazing with fire on the, on, up to the heart 
of the heavens, darkness, clouds, and fog. Adonai spoke to you from the midst of the fire, the sound of the words you heard, but a form you did not see, only a voice. He declared to you His covenant, which He commanded you to do the ten words, and He wrote them onto two stone tablets. Adonai commanded me at that time to teach you statutes and ordinances so that you might do them in the land you are to cross over to possess. So be very watchful over your souls since you saw no form on that day that Adonai spoke to you out of the midst of the fire. Here's the key thing. What was the focus? The focus is obeying God's word. That's the whole key. You want to be a good leader? Lead by the Bible. And look for the answers to why. Why are we doing what we're doing? That's what Moses understood. That's what Joshua understood. When he had gone into the land, they spied out the land. Remember, this is the land that they're about to go into from 40 years earlier. And the promise was it was probably stronger than 40 years before, wasn't it? Remember, these were the guys who were so big, they had grapes so huge. Wouldn't you love to see grapes that big? That's an amazing sight, right? And what did all the others say? Ten of them said what? These guys are too big, we can't do it. But Joshua's answer was, why are we doing this? And we're doing it because God told us to. God said, go take the land. And that's why he was able to lead that next generation. He didn't forget about the why. And when we focus on the why, we understand what's going on. I'm going to stop right there. Everyone bow your head and close your eyes. Abba, Father, we just come before you right now. Lord, give us the strength that we need. Lord, let us focus in on the why. And Lord, we know we can't do the why without having Yeshua into our hearts. With every eye closed and every head bowed, I want to ask you this question right now. If you watch you online, you have the same opportunity. We need to have that why in our hearts. And the only way to get it there is through, our, through the Messiah. We have to focus in on Him. We have to remember the promises that He made. And if you don't have Yeshua into your heart, I'm going to ask you right now with every eye closed, every head bowed, to get ready to make that commitment to say yes to him, to let Yeshua into your heart. If you're watching online, you see the information on the screen, you can contact us wherever you are around the world and we will pray with you that prayer of salvation. But if you're here right now and you're ready to say yes to him, all you need to do is raise your hand and we'll do a simple prayer. Is there anyone? Anyone at all? Abba Father, let us be the leaders that you made like Moses. Let us stop looking at the what, but start asking about the why. Lord, prepare us so we can prepare that next generation. Give us the strength we need through your work, HaKodesh, through your Holy Spirit. We ask this now in your son's precious name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand. Amen.